the other thing related to exactly to chemical engineering was that we were really doing different projects, but all on the basic of mathematical models and simulation and projects of building new units, uh, making new designs of units, optimizing exact units all in oil and gas, what, what I'm saying being in the operator's room and really seeing how you can improve the process, how you can improve efficiency. So having the hands on, on the real numbers, on the real life, this is something that I gained the most experience through these 10 years. Welcome to the Chemical Engineering Guys podcast, a show in which we share stories and tips from chemical and process engineers. We talk about student and professional life, as well as important aspects of products, processes, industries, and companies. But more importantly, what are the paths that these unique individuals are taking in this ever-changing world? Let's get started. What's up, guys? Welcome again to this episode in which I have PhD of Dr. Ivana Lukic. And I'm very happy because it's been a long time since I wanted to know more about her work. I've been following her work in Simulate Live. I know she's a very experienced process simulator consultant in the industry as well. Well, I don't want to talk about her. I think the best person to do that is Ivana herself. So Ivana, can you introduce yourself and let us know a little bit on your background? What did you study? Where? Why did you decide that? And so on. Uh, well, uh, hi, and thank you, chemical engineering guy, for this nice introduction. Uh, yeah, well, first of all, you sounded very serious just uh, announcing me as PhD. Yes, I, I am PhD in chemical engineering, but, um, you know, I, I don't think uh, it's so important. Uh, what I like to talk about more is, is my experience, which is um, I'm very happy about it. In the first 10 years, very much industry experience in many projects that I've been working in my family company. And a lot of knowledge in chemical engineering and practice that I got working in this company together with my father. He was kind of also my motivator for choosing chemical engineering because, I guess I was always interested in chemistry, mathematics. I always wanted to do things related to thinking and problem solving. That took me into this family company well, uh, where I'll be working on um, different projects in process design, in process optimization, and all related to different kinds of application of mathematical models. So using simulators, using software as MATLAB and, and similar. Actually, it was all always related to some kind of problem solving. So I was also doing um, process advanced control. And yeah, I, I don't remember. It was, it was uh, many projects that I've been doing. Then I spent two years in Emerson Process Management. That was also a great experience working as a consultant for optimization, advanced process control, and operator training simulators. That was a um, more corporate experience where I had the chance to, to understand how bigger systems are working. But um, after having this two years experience, I was uh, happy to come back to, to my family company because I'm more like um, a smaller team player and like to kind of be my own boss. So I also find myself to be a like entrepreneur in chemical engineering, which is, which is not so easy. And you cannot predict how your business will look like in a couple of months. But yeah, it's uh, also very much, uh, it, it's interesting. It's always interesting. So in the meantime, I did my PhD. What I also do, yes, a couple of years ago, I started my portal or my blog, however you want to call it, simulatelive.com. And I share the content of my experience, the projects I was working on and projects I would love to work on. And you can find a lot of uh, practical articles, experiences, etc. 
I'm now uh, mostly doing also uh, consultancy work and working with my partners in industry where I support their projects and their business development with the knowledge that I gained through this, well, more than 15 years. And uh, what I also uh, do over the couple, last couple of months or, or a year, to be exact, uh, I'm also sharing my knowledge as an instructor and having a couple of courses and working hard on doing and building some new courses, which should help chemical engineers. Well, I'm, I really would love that chemical engineers become more leaders and they are, that they are more confident in building their, their businesses, having their visions. So that wasn't so short about me, but... Um... It's great. I, I love it. It's great content, great introduction. And well, before I, I have a lot of things that I have here, I just wrote them so I don't forget them. But let's go back in time and let's say that you decided chemical engineering, as you said, because you were good in math and chemistry. But I want to explore a little bit more on how did your father inspire you on being chemical engineering? Was it his job? What his its leadership? Was it because the industry? What was that inspired you to go into chemical engineering? Uh, well, I believe it was mostly about his work and about his contacts. And I, I, when I was a um, little girl in, in school, I was looking into what he is doing and the people he surrounded with, uh, the people who were coming to my house and what they were discussing about. Of course, I didn't understand nothing from what they were talking about, but it always felt really interesting. And like they were always solving some problems and having interesting discussions. So that's, atmosphere was nice to me but you know to be honest i had no idea about what chemical engineering is i guess till i finished the, the university because during the university also you study theoretical things and you have no idea what that means in practice until you make that step in into uh, into the plant into an industry so i i guess that uh, i was lucky that the, the right things uh, got to me and that I decided to take this path because I love what I'm doing and I enjoy it in my career and I'm still enjoying it today. But I guess it was just the atmosphere looking into my father and seeing what he is doing. Okay, where did he work or what was the industry? Uh, well, he worked in oil and gas uh, for... 10 years or something I don't know and uh, at some point uh, he decided to uh, have his own company so it is a company called Model and he was working in this company alone for, for 10 years and working on many many interesting and big projects and after I finished the study I joined him and after that the both of us worked for 10 years and I was really lucky because we, we had an opportunity to work together on really big projects and what built my experience is you know being able to go through a project until the idea where you need to have an idea about the project then to close the deal then work on exact project until you finish it and get uh, the money that you worked on so, so I was I was part of the whole process and that's that's some of the main experience we, which I gained through these 10 years and the other thing related to exactly to chemical engineering was that we were really doing different projects but all on the basic of mathematical models and simulation and projects of building new units uh, making new designs of units optimizing exact units all in oil and gas what, what i'm saying being in the operator's room and really seeing how you can improve the process how you can improve efficiency so having the hands on on the real numbers on the real life this is something that i gained the most experience through these 10 years while while we work together and of course, in the beginning, we didn't really cooperate very well because he was very uh, furious and I was totally unexperienced. But uh, 
Let's he was patient. Here. Yes, he was very patient and I was very dedicated <laughs> in last year. So we were really cooperating very well. Well, after this 10 years, he stepped uh, out uh, of the company and he didn't... Uh, Went to retirement. Continue. Yes, exactly. So uh, I think it's very... Talking about your father, it's very interesting that he went for his own way. I don't know if it is it normal there in Croatia or maybe in your area that chemical engineers open a business like that, like consulting, especially in the oil and gas industry, which is, I would say, one of the hardest industries to start your own consulting business. Good question. It's not normal. To be honest, it's not normal. But he was always an uh, enthusiast. Uh, he was always a great professional in what he was doing. So, yeah, he was always dedicated. And, and I guess also he learned from some other professions, I would say, that are maybe better sale. They, they have better sales knowledge, let's say it like that. I just thought, okay... Um, If they are capable of doing this, that then I, with all this knowledge that, that I gained through my experience and my education, I should be able to do this as well. And it wasn't hard. Of, it wasn't easy, uh, of course, and very stressful. And so you can see it today uh, when you talk to him, how, how this stressful was. But uh, he built a major career and helped me build, build mine as well. That's great because I hear a lot of questions on how chemical engineers can make, I don't know, businesses or be entrepreneurs or freelancing anything. And I always get these answers or replies that say, no, it's almost impossible to do it because you need high investment, you need high capital, you need to have connections. But I think there's always a way to start a business. And it's, as you stated, it's, it's going to be hard, but you need yes. to work towards yeah. it. And I will, I want to talk a little bit more on that, on the entrepreneur experience, but later on. For now, I want to focus more on the first work that you had, which is consulting, you told me. Emerson Automation Solutions. What exactly did you do there? And was it the company what you expected? Or were you expecting to go to the chemical industry to a chemical plant, or maybe you were open for any type of job that was going to enrich your professional career. Why did you select it or accept it, this job? Well, actually, after having Daniel, I don't know how, how much experience I had at uh, the time that I decided to, to join Emerson. But what I wanted, I, I wanted to, to really get an impression how experienced am I? Because I, I was uh, part of the small company, family company, of course, I was doing projects uh, in different teams, but it was kind of uh, very defined surrounding uh, around me. So I, I wanted really to explore the opportunities in a wider area, and that was Europe at that time. So because of very good opportunity to, to really um, communicate with many different people and in the industries, I felt that it's, uh, it, it will be a very valuable experience for me. And it really was because um, I was part of the consultants team of Emerson Process Management. Uh, that was the name back then. So we were, we were solving and doing projects uh, around Europe. I get a chance to visit uh, many different plants around Europe and also work on, on different projects, um, be doing uh, benefit studies, supporting sales uh, force and, and meeting many different amazing people uh, around Europe, both in Emerson and with our clients. So it, it was a huge experience for me just to get more comfortable, I would say, in my own skin and to get more confidence for my own knowledge. Did you enjoy The workplace there, or yes, was yes. It I totally fine? enjoyed uh, the work. I enjoyed the team, and especially I, I always like to remember we, we had also very good time uh, with that team. Um, you know, just being off work, we had a great time together. It's always great to have a good workplace. I think it's a little bit of spice on the work. If you don't have a good workplace, it's 
If you have a good workplace, it's fine work. But if you don't have a good workplace, it's definitely going to be kind of like a hell or you're not going to enjoy it at all. So yes, totally it's always true. great to have a nice team or a workplace. So Ivana, now that was about two to three years. It was like uh, five years ago, I, I, I think. And, you know, I had this route, I would say, to come back to, to my own business and to continue in in a different way uh work alone to to work alone with all the experience i gained and since then i I didn't work on such a large project as i had the opportunity to work together with my father but i was involved in in many projects uh, anyhow as as a consultant or as a supporter for different teams and partnering companies that, that, that i work with so Today, I can say that, um, yeah, I'm part of the of model company, of my family company, but I work more as a freelancer or a consultant, let's say. I also ha- have an, uh, had an opportunity and I really wanted to, to build uh, something um, to share my experience. And this is uh, when it came to, to build uh, some content platform with SimulateLive.com. Okay, okay. So before we go to the model or right now how you're consulting, I want to know a little bit more on the doctor or PhD degree that you got, especially the work-life family balance that you had at the moment. How did you achieve that? Was it easy? Was it hard? Because I I know that being in a company which is family-owned can be flexible, yet can be way much more draining on time because they expect a lot of you so can you tell us a little bit more on that well uh, yes uh, you you are very right uh, of course um it 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 can be hard to be flexible but uh, you know with projects it's always different activity and there are times when you are totally overwhelmed with what you need to do and you work on weekends but uh, luckily, so far, it's, it is for a limited time, like a couple of months, five, six months. It, it, it's where the, it is totally uh, hard work. But then you get uh, like a more quiet period to, to get some rest. I mean, you, you always work something, but it is not like a, it is not always constant peak. It is it it is changing dynamic. So you can use your time off then to dedicate more to your family and friends and to your private interest. Th- this is how my experience is showing me um, through all these years. However, I, I don't know, but last year, over last year, I, I guess I have so many things that I like to do and like to start. So I'm really uh, working hard uh, last uh, year, but. Um, yeah, I'm trying to dedicate the time to work and dedicate my time to, to my private interests and, and family. It's true. There's not enough time in the day to accomplish all this. So it's very, very hard to have a lot of uh, goals yes. and needing to prioritize the work. So yeah. talking about that, let's talk about more on your current, let's say, status quo. You are currently working with model but uh, as you stated you are a little bit more into the freelancing or consulting part is this a separate part from the company or is it the company itself it is it is a company uh and it is related to to my name and um yeah, you, you know, you, you need to work for some company. So Model is the company that I work with. and uh, But through it, I, I do uh, many different things. And Simulate Live is just one of them. It is more to, I would say, marketing my, my work and my, my knowledge. To expose yourself. Exactly. So if, Ivana, the, let's say the company, is it you yourself or is it someone... Do you have employees or do you contact freelance or offshore? How do you work with your company? I'm uh, at the moment, I am totally freelancing and I work a lot. I mean, a lot. I'm working with with my partners as as a company model, but I, um, I, I would say I'm 
I don't have any employees. It's just me in the company. It's much more flexible, right? You think I, I always think a one man or one woman show it's way easier to fix because you don't have to, let's say, work with the human capital. So what do you think about? Yes. <laughs> yes. You, you don't have anybody to dedicate your work to. You, you know that you, you, you need to do <laughs> your work. But my, my plan is to, to build a team. But maybe since, you know, this time that we are talking uh, with this epidemic and all industry, all world is in a kind of transition. So I, I'm actually kind of uh, creating my structure of working for, for a future where I believe knowledge of this kind will be more needed and will be necessary because engineering is a base for for anything that we as human need so i, I would love to build my team in, in future um and to be honest i'm just going with the flow with, with what is happening in world and in industry in general and would love to be flexible and build the structure for future. And this is one of the reasons that I'm still uh, working as a freelancer and alone, because in, in this way, I, I think I'm more flexible to to really jump in, in into different directions that, that I, can, I can work on. And one of the things that I'm also working on these days is um, maybe, you know, For European Commission, there, there are many investment projects uh, happening, and I also work as one of the experts for evaluating uh, different investment projects. And this is also the work that I enjoy very much because I get to see uh, how people, uh, companies, enthusiasts are looking into future to, to build better industry, better products, helping our environment, and all that stuff that's that is of key importance for our future living. True. Actually, I was going to ask for those two, let's say, positions that you have. Currently, you have one as expert evaluation of innovation projects in the European Commission, and you're also chair of the organization committee for GOMA Symposium Fuels yes. for the Croatian Society for Fuels and Lubricants. Can yes. you tell us a little bit on that? Why... Well, for now, I can imagine that you do this, especially to know about the trends and also maybe to network and increase your context. But how do you got to there? Why do you got there? And what do you do in such organizations? Well, uh, related to being a chair of uh, the uh, GOMA Symposium, uh, since um, from when I started after the studying, I was in uh, oil and gas industry. And this symposium is the key symposium, uh, well, these days in the region, I, I would say, for oil and gas. And it's it's a symposium with the probably longest tradition in Europe. We just were planning to organize the 53rd symposium uh, on fuels this year. But just today, unfortunately, we needed to postpone it for next year due to this uh, epidemic situation. But the, the reason that I'm there is because I'm really, uh, I grow, grew up with, with the people that I work this with. So I feel uh, very much at, at home doing this. And it, it is not something where I think I'll be building my career, you know, organizing symposium. It is, it is more like a privilege to be part of this society and uh, also it, for me it is a privilege to be a uh, like organizer of this type of event and just meet uh, people from all Europe and wider than Europe who are coming uh, every two years to our symposiums so it, it is this is like a more privilege to me and working for uh, um, as an expert for European Commission well <laughs> it's also a privilege just being able to to really take a notice of what are um, companies of Europe, small teams doing today uh, in a way to, to improve our industry, improve products that all of us are using today and build um, better businesses. So it's also the privilege to, to be in touch with those type of, of projects. 
How do you get to the European Commission? Did you apply? Did you? Yeah, I just I, I apply with with my references and my experience and um, okay, P PhD uh, for sure helped that. Well, I, I didn't talk uh, till now um, much about my, my doing my PhD. I always felt that at some point it will be important for me, and I felt like it shouldn't be too much of trouble to do it because I wanted to do always wanted to do a practical PhD you know that you can apply in industry mm -hmm. and I was lucky enough to have both data and ideas of how um, process modeling can help in, in optimizing process predicting variables so PhD helped me to to get into this position um, being an expert for Uh, evaluation uh, of projects in European Commission. So then you find it valuable to get a PhD. Yes. After all. Yes. <laughs> Those three years were worth it. Yeah, I mean, definitely were. Uh, and there is also one other reason um, that they, they were worth it. I was doing this more than more than three years because it took time, of course. Uh, everything takes more time than you plan at the, at the beginning. But uh, also one, one thing that um, I'll, I'll be open and share it, um, you know, being a lady in, in profession that is mostly uh, a men profession, you know, and especially I always look, um, I, I do look younger than I am, at least I like to tell myself this. So, you know, <laughs> you come, a blonde lady comes to a plant, <laughs> you know, nobody wants to take uh, serious this lady. But uh, so I was thinking, okay, I will do my PhD then, you know, they, they will need to listen to me. Of course, it's not like that. And uh, it takes experience uh, and that people get to know you. So then they start to respect you, of course. But uh, it helped me in, in that direction as well that was also my motivation i have to be honest that's unfortunately true especially well not not as a lady but uh, a lot of people go to get the phd to assert its value or to assert that what i'm going to say is true or what i'm going to recommend is backed by my phd but talking about that now that you brought it How do you feel as a chemical engineer being a woman, but as a leader? Because I know, I know a lot of chemical engineers which are uh, female and are working. And I think right now it's not that great of a stigma. But I think the right now the taboo, well, not taboo, but the stigma is women in position of power, especially, as you stated, in a very dominated male uh, or industry. What do you... What are your thoughts on that? I think Europe is a little bit way better than Latin America. So can you share us a little bit on that? Yeah, um, I mean, in general, you know, no, nobody said that, um, you know, being a lady, it's, it would, um, I don't know, it, it is not a benefit. But uh, in reality, we know it is. And um, I, I always felt that I really need to do my my uh, job really, really good, you know, to be taken seriously. And I guess when I was younger, I was uh, more insecure about it. But as, as I gained experience, I stopped uh, feeling this as a big problem. And I kind of tried to use it for my benefit. And And sometimes when people underestimate my experience or my knowledge, I, I just let them do that. And, you know, I always get into position to to earn uh, that trust. If I don't deserve it, it's okay. But it is a fact that it's not, um, it's not the same position to come uh, to a plant for a male and for a female. And I guess... We just, uh, we as ladies need to be, yeah, more, more loud about um, what we are capable of and maybe not to get scared and not lose our, our confidence because the things are as they are. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I will say that I remember back in the day when I was in this textile company and I used to go to the plant and they told me. It's great that you are right now here because previous engineer was a woman and we couldn't do or talk as we typically talk. And so, and I asked them why, 
why is it so and they believe it like it was like a barrier or there was a friction between them so i i mean, find it interesting that they themselves use this friction factor like they didn't feel communication flow between them and the engineer but just because of the gender so yeah. for me it was pretty silly yeah and not only silly but uh you are working you need to be like feel at, at home at work you need to be confident when especially when communication and making that because that was made by themselves it was not like the the engineer was the women engineer was telling hey i want or deserve my respect please don't talk like that yeah it was just by they like alone close their ability to interact as humans so for me that was very very sad and yeah. it g gave me this picture on how the industry is uh, especially in the plant itself and also in positions of administration but in the plant how the operators see women or engineer women or st studied women as something strange because uh it's relatively women have been in the workplace already but It's relatively, let's say, 20 to 30 years that women have been uh, getting these positions of more uh, responsibilities and leadership. So I think it's a interesting shift that's going to happen, especially once again here in Mexico, not the most gender equality place to talk about and in the industry itself. So thank you for sharing, Ivana. I, I really don't like to talk about I don't know how to approach this as a man. So if, if a woman will say it's her experience, I would like to talk about it. But I, don't, I hate saying it. So you, what do you think as a woman in the industry? But I don't know what do you think about it. Do you like to be considered as a woman in the industry or do you prefer to be like neutral? Like, no, I don't, I don't want to be regarded with my gender. In the, in the uh, at my work I will prefer to be like neutral well I would like to be honest about it and in this being honest about it we need to say that this problem or however we want to call it it does exist and it's not the same uh, for a woman and for a man to come into operators room so at least in majority of places is not the same. So I would love to be honest about it and say it's like that. Of, of course, that I would love to be um, taken seriously and respectfully for whatever I am, male or female. And But I think that it's better to talk about it than to behave like this is not, this problem does not exist. So I'm really uh, willing totally to, to talk about it. And I do try to talk about it whenever I'm in, into position to do it. So, I, I mean, thanks for opening this discussion and sharing also your views on that. No, it's, I think it's an issue that has to be addressed yeah but i don't know how to do it because I, i haven't been there so of course i could speak on i feel the empathy of being young and not feeling the authority to tell operators that had been in the process their years working how to do their jobs so i kind of feel that idea but i i think with gender is way different so i i can i can feel it but i don't understand it quite well so thank you for opening you too ivana i also think talking about this is better so yeah including this in the podcast especially for the women that are going to be hearing the podcast it's really great to hear someone like you that you are right now in your company you're consulting you're leading I think it's great. So congratulations, Ivana. Yeah, uh, thank you. I, I think that it, it's uh, really for all the ladies that might hear, that will be hearing this this podcast, that uh, that is so important to not lose your confidence and just to keep on talking your story and believing in what you are doing and, and saying. And yeah, what what other people say, it's other people's problem. They always talk about stuff and it's going to be saying anything about everyone. So yeah. very focused on ourselves. Yeah. Exactly. Ivana, let's pass to our, let's say, final topic, which is simulate live your courses, your transition from, let's say, physical or real world to the 
uh, virtual world. So what are you doing right now? What are your ideas, hopes, goals for the, the upcoming uh, projects? Yes, yeah, so um, with this situation and with this transition that I was mentioning, and I believe that all businesses around the world are in the process of transition. Um, well, my goals are going into more, let's say, digital or viral uh, space. And from my personal point of view, opening up more towards, towards um, all the world. So that, that that they are there in in the digital environment. So in order to do this, I already have a lot of content uh, online. Uh, this is simulatelive.com. It is also the um, the system of my courses that are on modeldevelopment.thinkific.com. But I I think it's uh, rather confusing. So I am now uh, in the process of building one personal web page that will be really my my thing to do. Even alukes.com, uh, where there will be uh, all these streams going to simulatelive.com that has, as I said earlier, a lot of content uh, regarding industry uh, application or modeling application of stimulation and in general chemical engineering topics and what i'm also now building a better structure and more content uh, on the courses and teachings that, that i do and some of it is related to uh, predictive uh, predictive analytics and process optimization I also do trainings related to improving energy efficiency with pinch analysis. I am planning improving and building more courses on these topics and also building some, some new topics. And what is also something that we were talking about earlier, uh, bringing more content for chemical engineers who would love who work as, as freelancers or as consultants or uh, building their own small businesses. Since I have this uh, huge experience of working in, in small business, I will be focused a lot on building the content on, on that. And I just a couple of weeks ago started my YouTube channel. Um, so I just have a, a few videos back there and need to focus on, on building um, on building this channel uh, in, in next month. So I, I guess all these uh, contents that I will be sharing will be under one roof of uh, on, on my page, evenalukis.com. And where I will be also offering my consultancy and uh, availability to also build, um, develop studies for anyone uh, interested uh, of potential clients. And yeah, this is the structure that I'm now very much focused on building. So I, I guess the, the period of crisis uh, as this one that we are now kind of in, it, it's a... Uh, it's a beautiful opportunity to rebuild, to create, and to um, rediscover some real and good values and go back to some basics. So th this is something that I'm now doing, and I'm totally overwhelmed with everything that I would love to do. But, you know, it all takes time, so just uh, step by step. And everything is good until those steps are going into the right direction. <laughs> The, the problem is knowing if the right direction is the right direction. So oh, that's, that's, that's true. That, that's very true. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I get you. Uh, have an assumption that you are going in the right direction, but you never know. Working towards something is always considered a right direction, even though it might go to anything, but you will learn about the error or mistakes, but you are doing something. Doing is better than not doing. Exactly. If it is the wrong, the wrong direction, at least you will find that out so you can <laughs> change it. Yeah, exactly. Go back and, and keep the other path that you weren't exploring. Yes. I want to talk about more Simulate Live, which I think is a very great tool for all those that are interested in process simulation or learning more on how does the industry connect the design or the operation part. So... And right now I'm at Simulate Live and I see there are many like stories. Those are like posts. But what else do you do? I see that you have news, you have upcoming events, 
you have the courses that you already told me, but what's the idea of this? I also see that you have several jobs. What's the main idea of the platform? So what's what's the goal or what do you want to do with it? So the, the main idea of the platform is for technical engineers to find uh, some important information to help them in whatever they're doing related to process modeling and simulation, but also to general chemical engineering topics. So, and I, what is also my goal there to to give them uh, practical, let's say, uh, feelings about uh, what, what can be done in industry for those younger that are just starting uh, their work uh, after studies. And it is also uh, the idea of it to to find some important news that are related to process optimization and modeling. I, I always like to share information related to some open source uh, software, open source platform, or some free teachings. This is also something that I I, I try to share as much as possible. But as this is the, this platform is all done by me, so maybe um, you know it, it's hard to continuously build quality content. But there are a lot of content uh, to to find some uh, practical information uh, about how things are done in in the industry. Okay, sounds very great. Actually, I just enrolled to your free masterclass process optimization with predictive analysis oh, uh, course. Thank you. I will check it out and let's see how it goes. Hopefully I learned something new. Yeah, please uh, give me your comments when you when, when Of you course, I, I will send you <laughs> my feedback. I really like this. I, I would love to have this. For example, I did my project or let's say my main project, Chemical Engineering Guy, was the main idea to help students as I needed help. Because I remember back in the university, uh, there was no that much content to search other than the actual books. I really wanted content online and it, it happened like two, three years, five years afterwards and there was no content. So I decided to start it by myself. So what inspired you to build something online? Because I know that you have already your, let's say, physical job, but why going online? What what do you see its advantage or is it because it's the actual trend? What is the power of going online? Well, personal initiative comes from maybe the, the goal of opening up, first of all, myself and what I know about chemical engineering and just to share um, experience, thoughts, whatever with with other chemical engineers and especially those younger ones who still didn't have a chance to gain much of their experience. I would say that my first um, step, the reason of doing this is to open up myself towards a chemical engineering community. And and I would say that this opening of myself is going really, you know, it's it's kind of personal, you know, how, how much can you open personally and really show your knowledge, your uh, what you don't know, what you do know, what are your thoughts, what are your opinions. So it's not easy just being open. And I, I would say that parallel to how I'm feeling about this, it, my content is being created. So I would say that uh, that this is this is my key reason, and this opening up uh, started a years ago. Um, and but I think I, I don't know if you would agree that this trend, like everybody is doing blogs in chemical engineering videos and things, it, it started lately. But I think it's great, and I think it's great that chemical engineers are producing content. And it is, I think it's also very important for all of us to, to connect together. And this is also the reason that I appreciate a, a lot what you are doing and the way that you are uh, you know, connecting with different engineers, students, and all of us who are interested in chemical engineering and have a passion about chemical engineering. So I would say that's that's... First of all, what's my goal uh, of all this content and sharing is, yeah. So it's kind of personal. I think also it's a great idea to go online. And 
I don't know. It's great that you guys, you gotta check out Simulate Live. I'm going to be adding all the links to Ivana Lukic uh, projects, LinkedIn, contact info, whatever she wants to add will be added in the blog post of the episode. And before we finish, Ivana, well, one last topic. I know that right now you were uh, working or as an instructor in the university. I'm pretty sure it's mostly because you enjoy teaching, but can you tell us on your behalf why teaching in the university? Uh, well, um, yeah, I, I guess I'm very enthusiastic <laughs> about uh, sharing and te teaching uh, younger younger chemical engineers of some practicalities and giving sharing my experience for them to get their way easier. I guess that would be my first reason to do that. And right now with the pandemic, how are you coping with that? All is going online or are they still on vacations? Well, uh, I'm, I'm, I would say totally online. Um, things are happening regarding the teaching. So yeah, yeah, with the pandemic, you, I, I'm not able to, to predict anything. So <laughs> I'm trying to be flexible as much as possible. Well, you're a, a, a human machine. I can't believe it. You are a teacher. You are an expert for the European Commission. You work by yourself and you're making these blog courses. How do you get that much time? But how oh, it's crazy. Congratulations once again. It was all happening for many years. It's just that you see the result now. That's true. That's, true. <laughs> that, that's what people don't see. They see just the last... Yeah, the tip of the iceberg. Come on, I didn't do any video last two two weeks, and I didn't make another blog this week, and I didn't share this. This is what I see. <laughs> no worries, you're making this episode right now, so something yes. else had Thank to come. Thank you. Thank you. You are right. Yes. Okay. Now, Ivana, let's pass to the last part, which are quick questions on study life, professional life, and some random facts. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. Perfect. So study life. What would you change from your bachelor life or the time you were in university? And it can be something related to the uh, topics you studied or on how you lived your life. Fortunately or unfortunately, I was living. So my family house is in the same town in Zagreb where I did my study. So if I had a chance, I would study outside of my living town. This is ah, that's a nice one. Yeah. I also studied on the same town I lived, so I feel you. I <laughs> imagine myself going out and studying in another city, but next time, in another life, maybe. Yeah, another life. What do you think are chemical engineering underrated things or ideas, concepts, works, jobs, whatever? You say, now this is not chemical engineering worthy. I will say my comment, then, then you can add something. What I currently think about chemical engine, engineering and us engineers, that um, I guess that um, like uh, what I feel is that we lack a bit more confidence. And I'm saying this when I look into comparison to the years when I was starting and I always felt like chemical engineers are the smartest people in the world. And they still, I, I still believe that that today that we are really smart and capable. And but I don't feel that when talking to chemical engineers. And this is something that I, I would love to see that it's different. Yeah, I think it's what I wanted to hear. That I also think so that chemical engineers are considered very very smart. And that might be the case or not, but it's, you will need to find it out by yourself. Yeah. So next question, and this is a very interesting one. What would you study other than chemical engineering? Let's say that we go back in time. Okay, maybe maybe, maybe psychology, but just maybe, yeah. Okay, okay. Do you have any uh, engineering books that are loved or your favorites? Well, I'm really bad with the names, but I have huge amount of chemical engineering books, which I love. Uh, I, I guess troubleshooting for chemical engineers, that's what comes to my mind. But I mean, there are so many and I'm really bad with, with titles. So, um, and I, I'll be happy that at the end of this year, I will also be um, uh, doing the chapter on simulation um, 
one of one of major books for Professor Cocker, Coyote Cocker. Um, this is something that I'm really enthusiastic about. Students will read your work, that chapter in simulation? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. Later, you, you need to send me the, the title so I can check it out. Yeah, we'll be happy to. <laughs> nice. So this is very interesting. And the idea I got from another interview. Do you still use books for your reference at the workplace? So uh, I'm pretty sure the, the answer yes. will be, but let me know. Yes, totally. Totally, yes. Like how many uh, how many books do you use normally? Uh, when I'm putting reference? No, or working. Uh, like how many books do you use in, let's say, one month? How many will you take or read or check out for further information? Okay, when talking about chemical engineering, well, I use a lot of books because um, I'm doing a lot of content and a lot of teaching, so I use a lot of them. And sometimes I open, well, to 10 books, sometimes I do open. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty much a fan of the books, and I think that a lot of knowledge is there and that I suggest every chemical engineer to use them as much as possible. Okay, uh, that, that's actually what I expected since you are an instructor and you're also an expert. So definitely you need a lot of reference. But uh, this this question came because uh, a lot of my colleagues say, I have never, ever opened a chemical engineering book after I graduated. So it's funny to see the opposite right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, because um, I mean, there are a lot of the- theoretical knowledge is is there in the books, but you know, there are also a lot of case studies, real examples, and this is always something that I'm looking into I- I- while while checking out the books. Okay, let's pass to the next one, Ivana. Did you, which subject did you suffer the most? Uh, mechanical engineering. I had it in my first year. And you hate it? Yes, I did. Wow. Uh, that's, I wouldn't expect that. Maybe, well, what, what part of mechanical engineering did you hate it? Well, it was some, it was about materials, but. Oh, okay. Yeah. Material maybe science. Maybe, you know, it, it, if it was, it was given in a, in a wrong way. I say maybe it's not the problem in mechanical <laughs> engineering. No, no, of course. Or in the way it was given. But I, I get you. The, we all have this bad experience with subjects because subjects are subjects. It's not that they are hard or easy. It's just that the way you approach them or they were taught yeah. or the exams maybe or projects were. So that's why I ask, what was the worst interaction with a subject? What, what, what was yours, if that's okay to ask? Mine, what was yours? I will say thermodynamics or equilibrium thermodynamics. Oh, I really yeah. enjoy it. Oh. But I had a lot of a hard time understanding this abstract fugacity and entropy, all these concepts which are very, very like not yeah. easy to measure in real life or to get acquaintance. Yeah. So I really because I am very associative. So I see something, I relate it to the physical world. And well, those things are not that relatable. So I had a and it were the first topics in which I was understanding chemical engineering and like right now it's easier because I understand that some things are just abstract and that's fine. But at the moment I was like, no, I need to be able to relate this to something in real life. And it was really hard for me. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I can understand. (laughs) Okay. Now let's pass to the professional life questions. Did you have any, let's say first job before your actual engineering jobs? let's say, when you were a high school student or university student? Well, I had some, um, yeah, I I did a a short one uh, related to translation of some professional meeting, something like that. That's nice, nice. I used to be, I don't know how to say it, but I transcript all the written data into a spreadsheet. So it was my very first job and I understood what was working. I think it's very important uh, for any, not only chemical engineer, for anyone to understand that what you do in life as a work is not the same as what you do in the, the study. 
Yes, that's very important. And uh, I, I remember when I st started working on my real uh, engineering job, my, one of my first things that I needed to do was uh, to draw a process flow diagram. And, you know, I, I was drawing it from artistic point of view. <laughs> and, and when my mentor saw this and he couldn't believe it, <laughs> Because I changed the process control of the heater and put it on the on the entrance of the heater, not uh, at at the outflow. So it, it was crazy, but that was that was funny experience. Yeah, it's totally different than anything you do during the study. Mm -hmm. True, true. Now I remember that you stated something that chemical engineers need to get more into the ro leadership role. So my question will be how to become a leader. Good question. Um, so I guess uh, to, to believe something, to work on something and to connect with people. But yeah, most of all, to believe in something that you can do and to continue doing it and to show uh, people around you that it is possible to build projects, that it is possible to develop solutions and that it's possible to build your small business, to, to focus on something and to really dive into it and until you get the results and to share everything you gain from that afterwards. But it, it is a very good question and I, I'm not happy totally with uh, my answer and I would need to think more about this. No, no, it's true. It's very hard to say. So I once read one book which said, if you can describe how to be a leader, then that is no longer a leadership position because yeah. being a leader is finding out how to be a leader. Yeah. If they write you to do this, then do that, then you will be a leader. Well, then by definition, it's not being a leader. Yeah. So no worries on... On your answer, I think it's good enough making connections, sharing. Uh, I will say also, like you, you are making a new standard for women. You're also making a new standard for simulation. Like you are right now one of the top process simulation websites. That's, in my opinion, being a leader. So doing stuff that you care and getting people together into that topic. Yeah, yeah. Well said. We also talked about women. Any tips for women? A chemical engineering women can be, but overall women can also be. Yeah, just keep on doing what you love to do and don't let anyone come in your way and tell you that you cannot do anything because you can do anything. <laughs> I guess that's, that's, that's for everybody, not just women. Who would you like to trade jobs either one day, one week, one month, one year and why? Oh, wow. <laughs> Well, I'm not sure that I would love to do that. I mean, it's not perfect, my job, but um, my my days, my months, my years, but I, I like the experience of it. So, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't trade anything. Nice. So this question is also maybe answered by the last one. Your dream job. Can you describe it? <laughs> okay. Uh, well, my dream job would be uh, the job where I'm flexible enough to, uh, first of all, dedicate my time to my family and, and friends, and then to be able to express um, something that I enjoy doing and get paid for that. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a dream job. Exactly. The definition of a dream job, I, I also support you. <laughs> Now, this is kind of a funny but interesting one. How often do you use the Laplace transform? Um, never. Okay. I, I'm still waiting for one chemical engineer to tell me. No, I typically use it once or twice a week. <laughs> it's funny. If you asked me the question, I, I was thinking whether it's a trick question that I use it. No, no. Day that I don't oh. know it. No, 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 it's a, a real, well, it's funny, real, random question. Okay. What, what's the best advice you were given? Um, I cannot um, get it into, into a line, but uh, it's a thing that you better do something and be sorry that you did it than not to do it. But it's a very nice line that says it, but I cannot remember it now. 
Yeah, I know the line, but it's also, yeah, it's very to be sorry then, sorry to be doing nothing. I, I get you. And it's, that's a psychological term also, that, talking about psychology. It's that you typically regret the things that you do not do rather than yes. the things that you actually did. Yes. Oh. Okay, so, okay, this one, this question is very ad hoc for you. What do you think is the future of chemical engineering and industry 4.0? Well, I truly believe that, that it is a bright future for, for that, as you said, for chemical engineers and for um, industry 4.0 or however we want to call it. And I believe that chemical engineers have knowledge and have tools that that can build better future for industry, for climate, for waste problems, for environment, for everything. So generally optimistic about the idea? Generally, yes, I'm I'm generally an optimistic person. So uh, this is yeah, that's why I believe this. But I don't know how okay. it's to be, but I believe that we, we need to be that we need to trust that that um, it's going to be fine. Yeah. Okay. Now let's pass to the random facts questions. Okay. Coffee, tea, energy drink, or any alcoholic beverage at the workplace in order to get active. What do you drink? Coffee. You coffee. Black coffee. Cappuccino. Latte. Well, uh, uh, cafe latte. Let's say it. Okay. So do you have any hobbies? Uh, yes, uh, I do a lot of sports. Uh, I like uh, walking, so playing piano and music. Okay, uh, that's not ni nice one. Sport and activity, physical activity and piano, a musical activity. B perfectly balancing your brain <laughs> hemispheres. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and do you have any hobbies that you want to develop that maybe you want to always have dreamed of, I don't know, I want to learn how to draw or how to make oil painting or any hobby that you want to develop? Well, actually, at this point, even though I cannot remember that there is something that I would like to develop and I, I still didn't. So, but there is something for sure, but I cannot remember now. That's fine, fine. So that was the last question on the quick questions. So Ivana, before we end up the episode, Uh, do you want to add something else, a general conclusion to the episodes? I'd say that um, I would love to, that, like to thank you uh, a lot for the opportunity, first of all, to connect with you and to discuss the topics of chemical engineering. And I hope that this this will uh, motivate or, um, yeah, that, that this will motivate some of chemical engineers in whatever they're doing. And yeah, I would just like to sh to give us all um, some optimistic uh, views for the future and to for all of us chemical engineers to continue to be enthusiastic about chemical engineering and do what we like to do. Thank you, Ivana, for you to, for taking the time. I know it's not easy to spare one hour and maybe a little bit more because we talked before and. I know that you are a very busy person and this is definitely taking a lot of time, but I really appreciate it. And I'm pretty sure that the chemical engineers audience is also going to appreciate it. So guys, this was it, the episode with Ivana Lugic. And she's a machine for process simulation. If you want to join her, I will be adding all the contact data on the blog post. And we will see you in other episodes, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the episode. And before you go, I will really appreciate it if you take the time to share this podcast with your fellow colleagues, classmates, friends, or really anyone that might be interested on the topic of chemical engineering and its related fields. If you found this content helpful and valuable, please consider subscribing, writing, and leaving a review. Thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot. Thank you.